Hi, Matt. Welcome to Kentucky Collectibles. Thank you. Two pretty important pieces of silver that you have here. You're a collector, yes. and you know a fair amount of both of these of these pieces, right? And their yes. their historic significance. There's different values, right? And historic mm -hmm. value can often add lots of monetary value. Right. Tell us a little bit about the first object, which is this presentation cup. Okay, uh, this cup was actually presented from John Hunt Morgan of the Second Kentucky Cav. Uh, he was actually colonel at the time, uh, as it is on the cup. Um, of the Second Cavalry, and he presented this to who was named Dixie Morgan Drake. And who was Dixie Morgan Drake? Um, Dixie Morgan Drake was actually a uh, daughter of Benjamin Drake, who was also in the Kentucky uh, Second Cavalry. And Served under Morgan. Yes. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, and then Basil Duke was, you know, at the time, I guess, with them, uh, which is on his paperwork. Um, Basil Duke was, um, you know, like describes in his memoirs about the cup okay. and its importance. And so Duke has a memoir that talks about the cup, and it really kind of substantiates why the cup exists today, right? And it's right. a neat story, and you have a page here talking about that. What's the story about the cup? Uh, the cup, from what I read, um, basically they had been in on a, on a raid, and uh, at some point where they had, he had ridden, ridden, I guess, ridden far farther than any um, anyone uh, for like 12 straight hours. Benjamin had. Yes, under yes. Morgan, working for Morgan, right, right, fighting oh, yeah. with him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then he uh, had, I guess, uh, Morgan had asked him to do a task for him, and he was so exhausted and uh, twelve or fourteen hours, the story oh, said, yeah. and he was just, he was just beat, right, and oh, he wasn't, yeah. wasn't happy about it. <laughs> no, but so, it was an order, and he did it. Right, absolutely, yeah. And then uh, the next morning, Morgan actually surprised him, saddled his horse because he was so appreciative of what he had done for him. Morgan saddled. Benjamin's horse. Yes, and yep. uh, he said, you know, I can't believe that, you know, for such a poor private, a colonel would do that for right. you. Colonel but Morgan was that. appreciative of what he did for him. So That's in right. return, he returned the favor. And let him sleep in, the story said. Yeah, and let him sleep in by the fire. That's yep. right. So sure. why does the cup exist, and why do we have the picture of this tombstone here? This is um, Dixie Morgan Drake, yes. and the presentation cup is from Morgan to Dixie Morgan Drake. Absolutely, and she was named for him, um, by the way. And this is Benjamin's mm -hmm. daughter. Yes, Benjamin's daughter, uh -huh. and named for the South, Dixie. Yep. Um, but actually, uh, I was told it was a christening cup. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, you know, when she was a, a baby, which you can see she was born in 1862. Yes. And she lived to be 12 years old. I'm unsure why she passed away, but actually uh, she's buried near him in Lexington Cemetery. Uh, right near Morgan. It's it's extremely close. Yes. So as a collector, you've put these documents together to kind of tell the story and substantiate yes. uh -huh. everything. And again, um, with uh, Drake's relationship to Morgan and that act of kindness, oh, yeah. right, clearly looks up to him. He's a superior, but that act of kindness probably creates the, the naming. And uh, the Silver Cup, I think, is uh, is fabulous. I Probably if the Silver Cup came up mm -hmm. under the right conditions in, in a historic auction, uh -huh. um, I would think that a good value on it might might be something in the six to twelve thousand okay, dollar range wow. for the cup. Fantastic. Also, pretty important is this silver pitcher that you own. Oh yeah. Tell us a little bit about the pitcher. Uh, this pitcher was actually uh, purchased by me from my private collection um, several years ago, and it's very important, you know, not only in uh, the aestheticness of it, but um, the history as well. Um, it had ties to the Alamo, the two men that is present. Uh, you know, the presentation is too on the front. It's a presentation. Let's go uh, through this really, if we could, step by step. It's a presentation from whom? It's from uh, Stephen Burton to Miles Greenwood. I think, is it uh, from Greenwood to Burton? Actually, it might be. Yeah. It's, <laughs> well, you have to. It's from Miles. Uh, oh, it is. Okay. Greenwood uh -huh. to Stephen Burton, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And the story is Burton was in, is down at the Alamo. Yeah, he was at the Alamo. He sent the uh, two cannons uh, called the Twin Sisters that won the Battle of San Jacinto in the Alamo. Uh, basically, uh, that was not Burton, but that was uh, Greenwood. Mm -hmm. And he was important in the founding of Cincinnati, Ohio, to my understanding. Greenwood, who gives the presentation yes. picture to Burton, is pretty important <laughs> in Ohio history. Mm -hmm. Greenwood uh, establishes his first foundry about 1832. Mm -hmm. And in the mid-19th century, about 1850, he produces the first steam-powered fire engine. Oh, right, wow. and becomes yep. um, Cincinnati's first official fire chief. Mm -hmm. um, so he has this uh, he has this kind of amazing history um, and does the foundry, builds the cannons later. I think because of the Burton connection to the Alamo and because of Greenwood's connection to Ohio, this was also probably presented around the time that Burton became 
um, mayor of the city of Avondale outside of wow. Cincinnati. Um, I think that there's some significance here uh, historically between the two. They were partners in a foundry uh, as well a little bit later. I would think, again, in the right auction with the story being told, and it's almost yeah. four pounds of coin silver, oh, right? right? Yeah. Um, we could be looking at a value that's in the twenty to $30,000 range. Oh, wow. That's great. That's Thanks exciting. for bringing them in. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Appreciate it.